I feel the, the choice, um, every, if I can just relate it to every one of your souls for a start. For every one of you, God has created you in such a way that there is going to be a unique plan, if you like, that God has for you. You don't have to accept it. In fact, uh, many people never accept these plans that God has made. In other words, God developed you, God created you, and in built in you some natural things. And when you actually connect to God, you become the best you can be in those particular natural things. Um, and that's part of the process that every one of you will actually uh, follow. In, in our soul's case, uh, which is the combination of the two halves, um, there is this really strong desire for truth. Uh, and that desire for truth uh, burns within the both of us. And, and so from my perspective, um, if obviously in the first century, it's very difficult for a woman to be in a place of teaching, to be accepted. And so it made sense, I, I think, from a, from a practical point of view, that, that a male actually began that process, or the male half of our soul began that process. This time around, I feel that Mary is going to be far more involved in this process, and, and in fact, will be uh, just as involved, or if not more involved at times than myself. So, so my feeling is it's the combination of the two halves, the one soul, that, that God built this unique thing in, and all of you have a unique thing, it's just not the same unique thing we have. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. and, and in the process of actually discovering God and your connection with God, you will also discover what this unique thing is, this, this unique passion within you. And I'm not talking within just you, within both halves of you, right? you and your soulmate, you'll discover what this unique thing is. And if you follow the pathway that towards God, you will automatically grow in that passion and that desire and that unique thing will become something that will become renowned to every person who meets you. And in our case, the unique thing was this, that really strong passionate desire for truth and for God. Uh, and, and that's what I feel happened in terms of the soul, my soul, my longings, and I feel, and I can't, I won't speak for Mary on this, but her longings but my longings are so passionately strong for God and for truth that, uh, that, that it meant that my longings matched God's desire for me. And what will happen in your life is that your longings towards a certain direction, whether it be music, art, animals, bird, creatures, you know, it could be any area of life that you become passionate about, your longings will finish up matching God's longings for you and that's when you will experience the most bliss in your own life. Does that sort of make sense really from my perspective now? Yeah. You know, I find it really confronting. Um, one of the biggest things that I went through when I first met AJ was saying I don't want to be anybody special and I don't want to be any certain one of any certain 14 people who um, who have this uh, job to do, and does that mean that it's somehow elite? And well, I don't want, I don't, I loathe anything like that, you know, on on the planet. Um, so it's, it's taken me a long time to sort of come to grips with that, and I still don't, um, I still don't know that I I feel I can be as capable as AJ at teaching this stuff, um, but. But that said, it is my passion about it that has helped me overcome a great deal of fear to be sitting up here. Yeah, um, I do feel really passionate about it. And I can't see anything else on the planet at the moment that is actually going to help um, all of us to change. Dennis, something about this. Hey, Joey. Um, we did this uniqueness with an interest. Is it in Carl's? Uh, the question was, uh, with the uniqueness that's within each of you, is it going to be enhanced when you're with your soulmate? And it's a really good question, actually. Yes, yeah. 
The truth is, yes, it's going to be an enhancement as we decide because the, it's the two whole sides, two halves of the soul that contain the same uh, uniqueness, if you like, on that one in that one passionate area. And so, so naturally, when two of you combine, the energy that's flowing between the two of you on this area is just just enhances each one's feelings about the process, if you like. So, so the more the more time Mary has spent with myself, the more her feelings and desires for truth enhance, and then the more they enhance, the more stronger I feel about the truth and the same, about the same issue. If that makes sense. And, it's like a cycling of emotions that happens then between the two halves of the soul. And so as you grow towards God, that even grows even more powerfully. So if you imagine you've got this cycling of emotion going between yourself and your soulmate on a certain subject, and then this cycling is also going towards God and through the two halves as well, then you can start to imagine the power that it generates in your life. And so it becomes an all-consuming, burning passion within your life. And so yes, certainly meeting your soulmate can do that. Now obviously there's qualifications for that. And one of the qualifications would be that if you're, you and your soulmate are in very different degrees of soul condition, then obviously you're not going to be cycling the same kind of emotions quite yet until you are in the same similar or a similar soul condition. So initially it may even feel like total opposition so when I first met Mary, for example, the feeling that I got from her about me being Jesus was quite strongly negative. And, and because of that, it had a huge effect for me on the other side of direction. Of, so I went through quite a lot of emotions uh, working through that issue. Uh, and then as, as I worked through those emotions, and then Mary worked through her emotions, now the link starts growing. And as the link starts growing, and um, obviously the desire for it starts growing and the longing grows as well. So as the truth, and it's like John's message that we just read, as the truth enters me and enters Mary, and then we're bas basically cycling the truth back and forth between ourselves, it obviously is going to just continually grow and grow and grow and grow. So, and I suppose it, it does relate to a lot to the quality of courage. Um, when you first meet your songmate, you're going to find that you're probably going to be triggered quite a lot. And you're going to get to the point where you'll feel like, well, this is just way too much for me emotionally. The key is to have the courage to go into your own emotions constantly about that, rather than avoiding your own emotions about that. If you avoid your emotions, you're just going to avoid each other and therefore avoid this growing emotional experience. Remember this emotional experience is about you becoming more and more overwhelmed with emotion, not less overwhelmed. So the power of the emotion is going to overwhelm you more and more and more. And obviously what you're doing as your soul expands is you're coping with greater degrees of emotional expression. So as your soul expands, your soul's ability to expand its emotional expression grows. Now obviously when you meet a soulmate, if both of you are growing in that degree, then the ability to experience emotion between each other also grows in a, in a huge way. But also the experience together, you form, in a way I can feel, and, I, and you, Mary can point it separately about this, but I can feel in a way myself merging with her. And as that merging process continues, um, I, I feel that our combined emotional experience just grows and it becomes more intense. And sometimes I know that is quite scary for Mary because she still has some emotions about wanting to be an individual, wanting to stay away from that. Whereas I have very little of those emotions left anymore. I feel that we are one individual, not that I am. I feel like I'm only a half of an individual, if that makes sense. Not in an incomplete way, but in the fact that the expression of our soul, if you like. And there's been some channeled messages about this recently, uh, the some of about how the two halves of the soul, when they meet, create really a third entity. And the third entity, obviously, is the combined soul, which has much more power than each half has living separately. Yeah, Mary, doesn't want to comment. <laughs> 
but I still get challenged sometimes about um, uh, us becoming one entity because uh, I probably have still a lot of emotions of being very independent, very individual, and um, fear about total vulnerability as a man um, because I have a fear of heart um, hurt to me. It's not related to AJ, it's just an injury, you know. I just have this feeling that if I expose myself and become completely vulnerable as a man, then I'm somehow open to harm um, towards me. Um, yeah, yeah, and I think lots of us women have that. It's a kind of a, a multi-generational thing that, you know, um, a lot of stuff has happened. But I did have the realisation that while I hold on to it, it's actually um, it's not going to help anything really. <laughs> I have to have the courage to step forward and, and sort of face that danger, the perceived danger. Otherwise, I'll always keep 